What's going on everyone? Might go back with another PSA reveal video. Have an 83 card order. Sent this one in December 31st, 2019. It arrived back early July 2020. So 83 cards, personal order, all my own. Little mix, few vintage, a lot of modern and ultra modern. So let's get into the reveal. Had one card that was not slabbed. It was a 1971 Topps Thurman Munson. All-star rookie came back as miscut. So they did not uh, grade or slab that one. The Munson, uh, one of the all-time classics. Beautiful looking card. So that's unfortunate, but every now and then, that's going to happen. All right, let's get into the rest of the order. Start off with the 1948 Leaf Del Ennis. This one got a PSA 3. Uh, Del Ennis, fantastic fan favorite Philly. Had a really nice career, an underrated career with the Phillies. And I just really like 48 Leaf. Cool card. Obviously, knew this one would not grade all that well. But the vintage stuff, uh, just like to get it slabbed. So I already had one copy of this. Came across a raw one and decided to get it graded. So PSA 3 there on the Del Ennis. Got a 1971 Tops Hank Aaron in a 6. So an excellent mint 6. Overall pretty clean looking for a 71. Definitely not perfectly centered by any means, but the chipping is fairly limited in this card. So uh, always fun to get these done. Big fan of the 71s. And uh, really don't mind, uh, you know, getting grades 5.6s for the 71s at all. In a 1966 Tops Power Plus, Wes Covington, Johnny Callison. This one received a six. Pretty nice looking card. Um, you know, I, my expectations were a six or seven for this. Uh, obviously not perfect, but overall really nice eye appeal. This is just one that was in the collection raw for a while. Pretty certain my dad picked it up back when I was a kid, uh, when we were into cards together back in... Probably the early 90s, so cool one there. Johnny Callison, another Phillies fan favorite, and I know my dad always liked Wes Covington, so that's a cool one to get uh, encased for the collection. Got a 75 tops Hank Aaron in a 6. Again, not perfectly centered. Uh, has a few print spots down there on the right. Definitely has some uh, surface marks on the top above Brewers. But... Cool Hank there. Got a 1975 Tops Greg Lazinski. Another Phillies fan favorite. A big part of the early 80s teams. A team that won the World Series and pennant. Made some playoff runs. This one's a near mint 7. Lazinski is also popular in Philadelphia with his Bulls barbecue. So it's a neat card. Love those 75s. It's another Richie Allen rookie. Another one that was definitely had coloring issues and uh, not perfect. Received a four. I've been uh, I have a bunch of these sent out to PSA and SGC and various submissions. So kind of loading up on the Richie Allens. Most of them are probably fours and fives, maybe a couple sixes, but they're pretty tough. Here's a 1959 tops George Anderson. Obviously very off center. This one got a six OC. Fairly sharp overall, but the centering is obviously a pretty big issue on it. Uh, Sparky Anderson, Philly second baseman. Obviously best known for his days as a manager, but that's a cool one there. We've got a 2019 Topps X Vlad Jr., the legend red parallel. The reds, I believe, were one per box, but they are not numbered. And uh, this received a gem 10, so... Cool Vlad Jr. there. Be interesting to see what he does in 2020. A little disappointed in this one. The 2016 Topps Chrome Ketel Marte rookie. Sapphire edition. Received a mint nine. Definitely uh, was expecting, anticipating a 10 on this one. Uh, I remember looking it over. I don't, you know, like any card, you can find the smallest of flaws. But they went with the 9 on this. I think this is one of those cards that on any given day could be a 9 or a 10 via PSA. SGC, probably a lock for a 9.5 with a chance at a 10. So that's uh, that's what you play with PSA. 
I enjoy uh, PSA service, love the slabs and everything, but the 9 and 10 differential, if you're going to go half grades on virtually every other grade, it's kind of rough to uh, really not do the 9 and 10 uh, differential because there just is, uh, there's definitely a variety. There's a minuscule difference sometimes between the 9s and the 10s, so there's some that uh, can either go back and forth pretty easily, and we, we've seen that with people kind of submitting and resubmitting cards in the past. Anyway, here's a 2019 Topps Chrome Francisco Lindor Sapphire Edition, Gem 10. Great for the Lindor PC. The Sapphires look amazing. We've got a 2018 Bowman Mega Box Shohei Otani Chrome Rookie of the Year Favorites. Received a 9. The difference with the modern cards between 9 and 10 can be, uh, sometimes it can be very noticeable. Other times it's so insignificant that it does make you think about when you're uh, paying that premium for a 10. Sometimes it's just not worth it. Got a gem 10 on this 2019 Topps X Tatis Jr. set. Bryce Harper style and swag. Obviously they ended up using that image on the 2020 base card, but pretty cool looking card. Obviously not something of tremendous value. Just uh, Picked it up raw and thought it looked really good when I looked over it and wanted it slabbed for the uh, Harper collection. It's a 2019 Bowman Chrome Mike Trout, Gem 10. Didn't open much Bowman Chrome last year. Um, from what I did, I looked at the Trout, and again, I think Trout is basically always worth slabbing. That one is for the collection, but if I had extras, you could easily uh, do okay selling them. It's a 2018 Topps Chrome Update, Ozzy Albies, Gold Refractor. Unfortunately, this is the All-Star Game uh, version of his card. He has a couple cards in Chrome Update. Uh, you know, the standard one, a little more desirable, but still, number 50 Gold Refractor in a Gem 10 is a pretty cool card there of Ozzy Albies. Probably one of the more underrated players in the hobby and the game. It's another nice Mike Trout. This is the red parallel from the Vlad X set. Here's an awesome one for the Harper collection. 2019 Tops X, Vlad Jr., Bryce Harper, the legend, gold. So the golds are one of ones. And I uh, was lucky enough to pull this one and receive the Gem Mint 10. Also pulled a Bobby Abreu, which is uh, off for grading. I don't remember if it's a PSA or SGC. So as a Phillies fan, was very lucky to pull a Harper and Abreu one of ones. So these, these are autographs out of the Top Zek sets. The only autograph in the Vlad Jr. set is Vlad Jr. And pulled a few of the autos and picked out the three best. And sent them in. Two of them I thought were virtual locks for 10s. And one I thought could go either way, a 9 or a 10. And I did receive a mint 9 on all three of them. So these are sensitive cards, but uh, a little disappointed to just go uh, straight 9s on the three of them. Again, you know, I'm not going to probably spend the time or money to uh, cross over or send into SGC. But I definitely think a couple of these could easily, if you send them back to PSA... Or if you win SGC, I think you'd have a strong chance at a 10. But it is what it is. PSA has certainly been a little more strict lately. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Uh, 2019 Tops Update, Luis Arise, 150th anniversary. Received a 10 on this, so that's a nice one. And the reason I say that is, you know, there's some orders where I notice they just feel a little easier than others. And I really generally judge it on the cards I send in because they're the only cards that I, you know, specifically know, um, you know, what I looked over. So here's a Gem 10 on Nick Senzel Gold from 2019 Tops Update. Some Tops Archives snapshots, Mike Trout's surprisingly did really well on these. These are uh, notoriously troublesome at least the 2019 version sometimes with centering but more so with mild chipping on the edges here in the middle so it's something you want to look out for if you're potentially grading i had a few that i uh you know have sent in and got nines but did well on these trouts at 10. this is a product that I opened a lot of and 
kind of sold some off and others decided to keep a few I ended up looking at so did well on those this is a Jordan Alvarez from 2019 Tops Heritage Minor League gem 10 on that nice looking card Tim Tebow in a gem 10 Wander Franco in a gem 10. So it did pretty well on the Heritage Miners. Also got a 10 on the Beau Bichette. I think I opened one box of these. Pretty fun product. Definitely a little bit of value in it, especially for the price you pay. You got a mint 9 on the Fantastic Feats Franco. Be interesting to see if he uh, gets an accelerated call to the big leagues this year. This is Joey Bart, Gem 10. Received a 10 on the Bryce Harper, the family business, at a 2019 Topps Chrome update. So, nice looking card there. Pretty much any uh, Phillies Harper I come across, I usually try and send one in, get them slabbed. This is an Acuna in a 10. These are great looking. This is probably my favorite insert out of Chrome Update last year. The greatest moments. You know, they're neat cards in the Topps paper flagship, but the Chrome ones just, uh, they just really stand out, especially with that refractor shine in the background. So the Babe Ruth in a 10. Jackie Robinson, which is a fantastic card in a 10. Especially the old school guys in the black and white photos. I mean, these are neat too as well. The Trout in a 10. Trout in a 9. A few autographs from Chrome Update. Brian Reynolds in a 9. Reynolds in a 10. And Keston Hiera. That's from Topps Update, Rainbow Foil. Again, rookie debut. So the uh, standard rookie card is a much bigger deal, but even the rookie debut is a nice card. And the Rainbow Foils to me are kind of tough, very easy to flake. So got to be careful with them. 2019 Chrome Update, Vlad Jr. in a 10. Vlad Jr. in a 9. Vlad Jr. in a 10. Vlad Jr. in a 10. This is a pretty neat one. The X-Fractor. Love the look of the X-Fractors. It's at a Chrome update. Number to 199. Received a 10 on that. Get a 10 on the Brian Reynolds X-Fractor. Purple Parallel, Castanera. It's a rookie debut in a 10. Purple to 175. Chris Paddock Purple in a 10. Nick Senzel Chrome Update in a 9. Vlad Jr. in a 10. So I, I guess I had a big stack of juniors set aside. Another one in a 10, did pretty well on those. Mike Trout base, received a nine. Trout Refractor, received a nine. Nolan Arenado, got the mint nine. Shout out Bald Rhino, another nine in the pop report for Nolan Arenado. Aaron Judge, Silver Pack, received a 9. Shane Bieber, Gem 10, Chrome Update. Ozzy Albies in a 10. They're Shane Bieber's. So I probably have a stack of them somewhere in a common box. He wasn't one of the guys people were necessarily chasing when 2018 originally came out. Austin Meadows in a 10. 2019 Chrome Update Pink Refractor Tatis Jr. in a 10. Got a 9 on the Luis Arise Refractor at Update. 
refractor numbered to 250. Got some 2018 Chrome update, Ronald Acuna, rookie debut in a 10. Uh, Chrome update, HMT 25 in a 10. Another Cunha in a 10. Cunha, 10. Cunha, 10. Glaber Torres in a 10. Another Glaber in a 10. HMT, 9 Glaber in a 10. Glaber had a lot of cards in 2018 Topps Chrome Update. I think he had an All-Star Game card, a Rookie Debut card, and seemingly two base cards. Tens on them. And then really uh, took a beating here on the Ronald Acuna Topps High Techs. Uh, pretty much straight nines. So these cards, to me, are very difficult to grade. I've heard people say, oh, they're easy. Like, I don't think so. Of course, the corners and edges you generally don't have to worry about. And centering... Uh, not too much either, but look at all the surface. Look at all those areas that you really have to look at to avoid scratching. And, uh, you know, little scuff marks. I've seen a ton of these come out of the packs with little scuff marks, but I thought these Acunas were all pretty strong looking. I certainly didn't expect straight 10s, but I think I should have had a couple of them. And, uh, you know, at least they were consistent about it. The thing, uh, you know, I don't mind strong, strict grading. I'm fine with that. It's just, I really, uh, with all the orders I've had come in recently, I haven't seen a tremendous amount of consistency. So, another nine. These are, uh, you know, I'm not going to probably do anything with them, but they'd be SGC candidates to me. I think they'd be nine fives because... Maybe they're not gem mint, but I don't think there's enough wrong that would drop them to a nine. The difference would be so minor, so they'd probably be nine and a half in SGC. Another nine. Also, the thing uh, PSA does not differentiate the uh, different patterns in their slabs for high tech. SGC does uh, with the background, so they have a little more detail. There's another nine. This one is marked Orbit Diffractor because it has a uh, little extra to it design on the back. But that was also a 9. Got a blue parallel, which is numbered to 150 in a 9. Do have a Juan Soto from Chrome Update in a 10. Jack Flaherty, red, numbered 6 of 10, Orbit Diffractor. That one received a 9 as well. And then I did get 110 from the high tax, and it was this Magma Diffractor Green Parallel, numbered to 99 of Ronald Acuna Jr. But overall, pretty fun submission. Pleased overall. Like I said, I think the uh, high techs were a little harsh for all nines. And the Guerrero autos, again, looked them over super strong. So I personally expected two tens, but overall happy with it. Did fine on the vintage and did really well on the Chrome update stuff. So that's a look at this order from PSA. Always fun to get an order back. Hope to send out some more stuff to PSA in the future. And of course, I'll continue sending stuff to SGC as well. But it's always just fun to uh, look your look at your cards, evaluate, kind of think about what you might get, then anticipate the return. And once they come back, sometimes you might be mildly disappointed, but most of the times you're fairly happy. You have a lot of fun, and I like to share them with everyone. So comment below. Let me know what you think of this PSA reveal. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. Have a great one.